this screencast, we'll talk about the microscopic structures of both compact and spongy bone. As a reminder, you have two types of bone. Compact bone, which is more compact, forms the superficial parts of the bone as well as the diaphysis. Spongy bone fills the insides of the bone, especially the ends, and is also called cancellous or trabecular bone. Here is what our bone looks like. We have compact bone here and then spongy bone all in here. Now we're going to talk about the microscopic structures, the things that we cannot see with our eyes, but instead need a microscope to view. Osteocytes are mature bone cells. Because they are living bone cells, they can't just grow in the middle of this hard extracellular matrix. Just like if you were going to have grass or weeds or a flower grow up through the crack in a sidewalk, you would need open spaces, right? Those plants can't just grow up through the middle of the sidewalk. They need a crack in order to grow. Osteocytes, therefore, are located in open spaces called lacunae. So each one is called a lacuna. So here you can see an osteocyte sitting in a little hole called a lacuna or an open space. The extracellular matrix is what we think of as hard bone tissue. It's the extracellular matrix, which means it's outside of the cells themselves. It is made up of mostly collagen and inorganic salts like calcium uh, in the form of calcium phosphate. Collagen gives bone strength and resilience, and the salts are what make it hard. So the collagen fibers actually go in crisscrossing patterns for extra strength, but on their own, they're not hard. Right? Strong and hard are not the same thing. For example, you can have a rope that's very strong, but it's not hard. So the salts are actually found uh, crystallized around the collagen in order to make it hard. It's like taking a rope, dipping it in water, and then freezing it. Now the rope is both strong and hard. Lamellae are thin layers of bone matrix. So you can see here, they're in little thin layers. There's one there, two, three, and then four. And these are uh, just little concentric patterns that go around central canals called haversion canals. So this is a haversion canal, and you can see better in this one, it's a circles and circles and circles, concentric lamellae going around a central canal. You have, do have different types of lamellae, and lam uh, bone will be used to fill in the gaps, but we're going to focus on the concentric lamellae in this screencast. Uh, one cluster of lamellae around a haversion canal is called an osteon. It's also called a haversion system. These osteons all cement together using more extracellular matrix to form compact bone. So you can see here, you have like these big, long kind of tree-like things. Each one is an osteon. So here's an osteon. Um, they're around a haversion canal. And then there are, uh, there is bone matrix filling in the gaps between the osteons. You can also see here, um, the collagen goes in alternating directions in each um, ring of lamella uh, so that it has more strength. So bone cells need nutrients, but nutrients can't just get through this hard bone extracellular matrix. So we need a system of tubes and tunnels that are filled with blood vessels and nerves in order to um, have nutrients get to the blood. So the main one, as we know, is called the medullary canal. So here is the medullary canal in this picture, then here is the medullary canal in this picture. Uh, perpendic uh, sorry, parallel to the bone, parallel to the medullary canal, you have your haversion canals. So these are haversion canals. As we just mentioned, the osteons circle or encircle the uh, haversion canals. Then parallel to that, you have the Volkmann's canals. So the Volkmann's canals are going perpendicular to the direction of the bone. And then finally, if you zoom in more, you have these little tiny, tiny tunnels that are called canaliculi that are going to connect your uh, osteocytes to one another so that nutrients can diffuse. So the 
um, nutrients are located in the medullary canal, then they would travel via a Volksmann canal to another Herversion canal to another Ver Volksmann canal to another Herversion canal, and then go through all the little canaliculi until they finally get to one osteocyte. So Herversion canals, as I mentioned, are longitudinal canals. They're parallel to the bone. They contain both nerves and blood supply. And we have the Volkmann's canals. They are also called perforating canals. They run transverse or perpendicular to the Herversion and medullary canals and connect the Herversion canals with each other and with the medullary canal. And finally, as mentioned, we have the canaliculi, the little tiny, tiny tubes of bone that connect osteocytes. Keep in mind, each of these types of canals is just that. It's a canal, it's an open tube or tunnel or space, and then you have things inside of that space like blood vessels, nerves, or osteocytes. So that's compact bone. Now let's talk about trabecular bone or spongy bone. So these are trabeculae. Trabeculae are this like open lattice work, kind of corally spongy looking part of bone. So this is hard bone matrix, just like in compact bone, but there's a lot more open space. Because there's a lot more open space, we don't need so many tubes and tunnels. We still have osteocytes sitting in lacunae. They still need little holes or openings to sit in uh, because the osteocytes are living and the trabeculae are still hard, but they're not situated around central canals. Instead, the osteocytes are just in the trabeculae and they get their nutrients through diffusion. So because they're so close to the surface, they are able to just get nutrients through the blood vessels that sur surround them very closely. Uh, and they do have canaliculi, so it can get in that way um, or be transferred to deeper parts of the trabeculae. However, they don't need those central canals. So here's just one more look at our compact and spongy bone. Here you have the spongy bone, so the medullary canal would be over here. You have the spongy bone here, you just have blood vessels um, that are all here, right? So the, the blood vessels are all the way out here with the periosteum. They come in through the Volkmann's canal to a Herversion canal, to a Volkmann's, to a Herversion, to a Volkmann's, and then eventually weave their way through the spongy bone into the medullary canal. In the spongy bone, we just have diffusion that gets the nutrients from the blood into the osteocytes. But over here, we need that in the compact bone, we need the complex system of tubes and tunnels as mentioned. You'll also see an osteon here, another osteon, another osteon, just these uh, cylindrical systems that are situated around a Herversion canal. The thin layers are called lamellae. So you can see here one lamella is bracketed. Again, here's a lamella, another lamella, another lamella, and another lamella. Then you have lacunae. And so each osteocyte sits in a lacuna, which is an open space because it is a living cell um, and needs a space to be. So that is your brief overview of the microscopic structures of bone.